Hello, everybody. Welcome to Super Saint Podcast. My name is Steve, and uh, this is, well, this is episode one, uh, interview number one. Um, as I mentioned uh, in a short little promo, that uh, we're going to start something new, uh, see how it goes, see who uh, I can convince to come on camera and uh, talk to me for a little while. Uh, these podcasts, they might be five minutes, they might be an hour, uh, probably about an hour. Uh, but, uh, so we're just kind of play it by ear, see how it goes. And, uh, we have, uh, interviewee number one, um, uh, I brought, uh, uh, this young man on to talk about his, uh, his journey, where he's been, where he is now, how he got there. It's a pretty interesting story. Uh, one of the cooler stories I've ever heard. Um, and, uh, in full disclosure, uh, this young man is my son, so yeah, I'm a little biased. But um, so uh, again, my name is Steve Bailey. Um, the young man with me on the screen is Elijah Bailey. And um, I really just wanted him to talk about uh, where he is now, um, where his journey has led him. Uh, and uh, this is kind of going to be a, a free flow format. I don't have any notes. Uh, I thought, well, I, I know the guy, so, you know, I don't really need to have any notes on uh, what we need to talk about. So, um, so without further ado, uh, Elijah Bailey. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like I said, <laughs> my name's Elijah. I'm his son. Uh, yeah. Uh, so let, let's, let's, um, let's just kind of start at the beginning, not the, you know, very, very, yeah. Of course, <laughs> that would take too long and we don't want to hear all that. Oh yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, We'll probably revert back. To, you know, oh, yeah. to uh, maybe uh, uh, some of the, uh, I don't know, first inklings when you were little. <laughs> yeah. So maybe where you yeah. are now. So let me just, I'll just give you a brief overview right quick. So um, Elijah uh, just turned 21 back in September. Um, at the time of this recording, it is January. Uh, what is the date? I don't even know. January 15th, uh, Sunday. <laughs> yeah, 15th. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Second week in ordinary time. Um, so, um, Elijah graduated, uh, from, uh, St. Joseph high school in Conway, Arkansas. Um, he, uh, was lucky enough to get an appointment to the universe, um, to, uh, the United States military Academy at West Point, New York. Um, shortened version of the story, cause I want him to explain how he got, how he got there and all the different steps that were involved in making decisions. So Elijah is now. Uh, a seminarian for the Diocese of Little Rock. Uh, so let's just start with, um, let's start with high school. Um, I, I remember as we were, you know, as you were kind of preparing for college and, uh, you know, setting up your senior year of, of high school and picking classes and, and, you know, you had a goal in mind. And, uh, mm. uh, and you're a pretty, once you have something in your head, you're pretty driven and, and, and tend to, you know, bail after it full force. So, so just talk about a little bit about your senior year and how that came to be and, and, and what, what you were uh, kind of gearing up for it and, and, and how you and, and we made that, you know, uh, I guess kind of that decision and, and, and move forward to that. So. Oh okay. yeah. Yeah. So um, really I'd say it even started way back, probably closer to ninth grade. Um, ninth grade is, uh, the year that we were told that our grades started counting towards college and things like that. Um, I think I took the ACT first in ninth grade, maybe, or is either that or 10th grade. Um, I think you did take it. But yeah, <laughs> pretty sure. Yeah. Um, but I remember back then thinking like, okay, I'm one of five, you know, college is pretty pricey. So I need to be getting good scholarships. Um, I had my heart set on Notre Dame for a really long time. Um, from like fifth or sixth grade, that was the school that I looked up to. I really wanted to go there. And I knew that that was super competitive. Um, but I also had, you know, UCA, Brighton Conway, really close, uh, Fayetteville. Um, and then I remember, I think it was, it might've been eighth grade or sometime around then, um, we were driving back from school one day. And I remember uh, we were talking about, I think it was you, me, and Freddie, and we were talking about colleges, and I didn't really get the 
the whole difference between a public school and a private school for college because you know I had it in my mind like oh public schools are easier than private schools and all that stuff you're like no there's you know there's some pretty you know tough public schools out there and I think I, I think I mentioned West Point specifically I was like oh yeah it's it's a public school, so it's probably super easy, and it's military, and you're like, yeah, don't think so. Um, but I remember uh, ninth grade, I wrote a paper. Um, our English teacher told us to write a paper on a job that, that we were going to look into and possibly think about going into, and I did mine on the 75th Ranger Regiment. I thought those guys were awesome. Um, they are awesome. They're you know, really, really cool regiment in the army um so i really had my heart set on that um, i started talking with a marine recruiter probably sometime around it was either the end of 10th or the beginning of 11th grade yeah um and he was pretty relentless um, surprised i didn't get talked into that um but i knew that military was somewhere somehow going to fit into there um so eventually i guess i got uh, turned on to the military academies, um, Air Force, Navy, and Army specifically. Um, Coast Guard, I didn't really look into. I probably should have because um, we had a couple of exchange cadets from uh, Coast Guard Academy, and they're really cool guys. Um, but I really had my heart set on West Point specifically because I wanted that Army aspect more than um, Navy or Air Force, which, you know, my uncle, Air Force, um flu c 130s and you know so that that was a little bit of pressure to go air force um senior year um i never ended up applying to notre dame um but i applied to all three academies went in for interviews did the whole process which it started january of my junior year and then it's all the way through i think it was like maybe january of my senior year i mean it's it's a really long process um I ended up getting denied um, by the Air Force Academy pretty early on, um, and then later on by the Naval Academy uh, much later is probably late February by the time I got a letter from them. Um, and then finally, it was it was right after COVID hit and everything shut down. Um, I think it was the week after our spring break, so it was like middle to end of March. Um, I got a call from our representative french hill um, and i was i was out fishing with frederick my brother it's about to say you, you gotta tell the story because it, it's funny yeah <laughs> yeah yeah i uh, so i'm out fishing with my brother and i get this phone call from a random number i don't recognize so i just let it go to voicemail like i always do and we get back to the house and i listen to the voicemail and says, what time was hey elijah it? oh it was, it was like eight was like or nine o'clock yeah yeah, it was it was late, and I listened to it to the voicemail, and it says, "Hey Elijah, this is Representative Fred Schill. Um, Call me as soon as you get a chance. Thanks, bye." That was it. And uh, what were you gonna oh, do? That's you weird. Oh, it, I'll, it, I'll, I'll call him back tomorrow. <laughs> it's too yeah, late. yeah. I told no. yeah, call I him told now. Dad that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I had it in my mind that you know, like professionally, you want to keep it between like you know, eight o'clock and like. 536 at the very latest so i was like ah that's that's a little unprofessional but yeah that said call him back right now and so i did didn't even ring once he picked up you know some small talk for maybe a minute and he goes hey well i got some good news for you you're going to west point and you know i couldn't hardly believe it it was it was awesome so um kind of that last uh last two months I was really kind of prepping for that um I think at the time you know COVID's going on so all classes are online um I was working at Coney's um garage doors and um I was their wood door guy and the guy that taught me uh, he quit um due to some health concerns so they needed a, a guy to come in work on wood doors so I was doing school work from six in the morning till about noon and then i'd go to coney's and work for a good five or six hours um, building wood doors um but i was also you know trying to run and you know work out and try to get ready physically so um yeah. it was a pretty you know pretty busy time um 
but it was it was really awesome and then uh, I remember going let's see here I'm trying to remember everything that kind of happened up to going but I mean not really too much to be honest yeah really you know, we graduated um, yeah you know, of course your, your senior year that that um, the spring of, of your senior year was that first real it, it was when COVID mm -hmm. started and everybody was freaking out because didn't know what was going on. So basically, yeah. your whole prom uh, name, oh, yeah. spring senior function was pretty much yeah. gone. Yeah. Well, we already had prom. Remember, we oh, had it right. like yeah. we had it back in February because uh, yeah. Catholic school. Yeah. <laughs> we had prom not during Lent, so we had it before Lent. Uh, luckily right. this That's time. Right. So you at least got to have that. But but pretty yeah. Much yeah, everything else, sports. We're you know all the fall sports were pretty much shot. Oh yeah, so it was a it was a, a long yeah dull yeah you no know. <laughs> yeah it, it really was. It lets you kind of prepare for uh for yeah what what was coming up. So what, what yeah. was, I don't remember anything really too crazy happening that uh, yeah that um summer. I do remember um the only thing that I remember that kind of changed in that time period is. I was starting to go to adoration after you uh, at midnight, or I guess it was one o'clock uh, on Friday night, uh, 1 a.m., because uh, I can't remember who was in there at the time, but they were super unreliable. So I, I went in because <laughs> I remember they moved um, they moved it from the chapel to the main um, main church. And yeah. But I mean, nothing too big going on there. But so, so we, uh, you got your report date, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, so your mom and I uh, loaded up a car and we drove you up there to to West Point, New York. And, and by the oh, way, yeah. it's a uh, it's about a nineteen hour drive from where we are. So oh, yeah. we, we actually we took we took two days going up there. Mm -hmm. and, um, we did. And so actually, it was three days. Was it? I guess so. Yeah, right. because because we stayed in New York one day. <laughs> That's yeah. right. So we um, so your report date ended up being on a Sunday, if I remember right. Yeah. Right? Wasn't that Sunday morning? No, it was a month. It was a Monday. That's right. It was, it was July thirteenth. That's right. Yeah. We, um, anyway, so we obviously good Catholics. We went to mass up there. Yep. And, uh, <laughs> and so I'm sure you did not sleep that first that night before. Um, oh no! It took forever. Night. You had no nope. idea what was going to happen when you get there. So we, oh we yeah. So when you when you drop your new cadet off, actually you're not even a cadet yet, I guess officially. Oh yeah, no, you're drop a new your cadet off at, a, at at least at West Point. Uh, it's a long line of cars. You have a de uh, a date and a time. I think with COVID they really stretched it out over what like three or four days, something like that. It, it was three days, yeah. Uh, so anyway, so you you get in a long line and you pull through this parking lot and basically you shove your kid out the car. You give them one last hug, and somebody's mm -hmm. yelling at them to, you know, yeah, <laughs> get it, get on with torture it. Yep. So, yep. <laughs> I remember so. Um, so my wife and I, we we decided, well, we have to make this drive, um, and so we'll just we'll we'll just take a little bit of a, a slow, slow route back home. So we ended up going taking a little private vacation uh, after mm -hmm. Elijah off, and uh, so one of the things that they told us was that your son will call you um, at some point between here and here on day one, um, depending on, well, a little bit of backstory, and I won't get into it real far, is that traditionally COVID changed everything. Um, okay. So traditionally the parents were just usually stayed on campus on report mm -hmm. day on that first day. You drop your kid yeah. off, there's a parent reception area. They, you, they take you on tours of the place. Then at the end of that day, they have uh, roughly uh, uniformed, shaved heads, and, tra yep. and trained in some rough drill. These, you know, yeah. new cadets to be, and parents get to watch that as they march out for the first time on the parade ground. Well, because of COVID, we didn't get to do any of that stuff. So we basically did dump them out the door, and they they just said, "Here's the exit. See you later. Have a nice day." So yeah. I remember. So they told us that he's going to call you at some time, and I'm thinking they take their phones. So, so we take off driving. Uh, we took a jaunt down through, anyway, and we went to, to a North Carolina to stay for a few days. And uh, I remember, I don't remember exactly where we were. My wife probably remembers, but 
um, uh, the phone rings. It's an odd number. I'm like, this has to be it. So we had about 45 seconds. <laughs> he said, mm -hmm. and I forget. Uh, pretty much, he said, hey, everything's okay. I think I like it. <laughs> I was like, yeah, you like now, buddy. Yeah. I think I'll be okay. <laughs> I think yeah. it'll be okay. That's what it was. I yep. Think it'll be yep. Okay. So, yeah. And then that was it for two weeks. We didn't hear from you for two weeks. And then, yep. uh, you know, we get that first, you know, true call. We got in the habit of doing FaceTime. Um, so, mm -hmm. Um, just, um, in fact, hopefully brother Joe is okay. Um, I may, uh, try to link, uh, below this video. Elijah started a YouTube channel and it's got some, some pretty cool, uh, videos of his time at West Point. And he did a first semester, second semester. They're pretty entertaining. They're pretty good. And they're, they're pretty clean. So <laughs> yeah, pretty, yeah, there's, there's some rough parts, in it. <laughs> but it's the, yeah, honest, so what do you, what do you do? So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty it's pretty interesting. So so yeah, just briefly go through, you know, your first uh you know, getting in, getting settled. I mean, you don't have to get in in, in crazy detail unless there's okay. something you recall that's, that's pretty interesting or funny. Um yeah. So, you know, for the first semester or two, it was you know, you didn't get to come home till Christmas that first semester. Mm -hmm. We didn't get to do the traditional uh parents weekends that, that his first semester. Nope. So we had basically besides FaceTime. We had zero contact for what almost six months. Uh, five yeah, months. yeah, five months. Five. It was actually five months of the day we got out. Um, so I, I reported uh, July thirteenth, and then we got out. Army Navy was December thirteenth, so I guess it was yeah. a month or however many months in a day. So um, that's right. That's yeah, right. yeah. We, yeah. We, uh, so my wife and I we actually drove up, um, and that first Army Navy game that we got to experience, we didn't get to experience live. But we were 20 minutes away from the stadium in the hotel. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if, yep. you, if you're a football fan or if you like the Army Navy game. If you remember that game, it was crazy incredible. foggy. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, that game was awesome. Yeah, it was, it was fun to watch. <laughs> oh, yeah. And to yeah. see, to think, my son's out there somewhere. And, uh, <laughs> and that massive. Oh, yeah. gray. And it was gray mm -hmm. on gray. It was fog and the. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you all had the big, you know, gray cloaks on with there. And then you yep. say that's like almost the only time that you actually wear those those big capes. Oh yeah, the the long overcoats. Yeah, that's yeah. It's Army Navy pretty much. Yeah. Never touch them again. So, um, so let's uh, but, let's let's fast forward to. So you got to come home for Christmas that first semester, and that was awesome. Yeah, and it was a pretty good. Oh, yeah. You got well, almost five mm. weeks, I think, if I remember right. Um, yeah. So yeah, it was close to five weeks. Yeah. So then we shipped you back up there. And then mm -hmm. summer, we got to have a, a pretty good summer. We had a nice summer vacation while you were here. So let, let's fast forward to to um, the fall semester of, of year two as a uh, yeah. West Point cadet. Um, yeah. Just just kind of kind of start there. And just and this is really where this you know this is where the main part of the story kind of begins. So. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, I think even to start there, I got to back up probably to. I'd say probably about March of the previous year. Um, uh, my second semester up at West Point, I was taking a uh, ballroom dance class. Um, and I do that specifically hoping to find a girlfriend, which, you know, that's kind of a, you know, they joke about that the entire class. Um, uh, my dance partner, she was really cool. Um, and we got to be really good friends through it. And uh, we were hanging out a whole lot. Um, outside of it too and I remember uh, praying a whole lot about vocations uh, that whole semester um, just going back and forth anytime that I was like oh you know marriage life would be awesome I, you know I, you know I want to be a dad you know all these good things um, there'd be that desire to be like you know I want to be a priest and I want to do all these cool things as well and um, and it'd be the same anytime that I felt like you know oh I want to be a priest it'd be you know right back the other way um, just because the the priest on uh, on West Point, uh, Father Matt, um, Father Robert, and uh, Father Yebra, they're all just incredible priests, um, and they're super involved. The Catholic community up there is great. Um, but I was praying a whole lot about that, um, and I wasn't really sure where to take it. Um, but I just kept on praying about it, kept on praying about it. Um, get back for um, for that. Uh, I guess my third semester, it was, 
and uh, a couple days in, um, we're going, you know, we're making sure that, you know, nobody's bringing in COVID, so I go and get uh, COVID tested, and um, the uh, lady administrating the test, um, she pulls me aside, and she goes, hey, um, you got some problems with your medical record, um, you know, it's, you know, nothing serious, nothing life-threatening, but, you know, these aren't up to standards with army policies. You're probably not going to be around for much longer. Um, just some general stuff. But so I remember going back to my room that night. And of course, you share rooms up there. So I had two guys with me um, in my room. And I remember not telling either one, you know, I'm still trying to process this all. And I remember uh, going to bed that night and I'm laying down. Um, I'm praying and, you know, my prayer that night was really more like kind of yelling at God, like, you know, I just spent, you know, a year of my life trying to get up here. You know, I, I neglected friendships during that time. You know, I spent way too much time in schoolwork, all this other stuff. And I finally get up here. I put all this work in and it was hard. And it was, you know, strenuous, you know, what in the world? Why, why am I losing this now? You know, what's, you know, what's going on? You know, I keep on, you know, pushing all these things out. And eventually I get to the point uh, where I remember I just asked one question. I was like, well, what do I do when I go back home? And I had this voice. The only way I can describe it is I have this stream of thoughts going and then I have this voice go over the top of them um, at the same time. And um, it, I was, I asked, um, well, what do I do when I go back home? And I had this voice go over the top and said, why not become a priest? And I kind of shut up for a second and I was like, uh, that's kind of weird. So I, I was trying to recreate it in my head to like prove, okay, that's just me. I couldn't. And I was like, okay, that's just weird. And I just kind of pushed it away. I said, no, that's not for me. Um, and I kept on asking all these questions of like, you know, why, why did I go through this? And then I'd get an answer. Why did I go through this? And I'd get an answer and, and everything started to make sense. And eventually I just kind of said, nope, this this is all just because I'm tired, I'm sleep deprived, you know, I'm really stressed out. It's just, you know, that's that's why I'm having all these crazy thoughts. Um, so I roll over, I go back to sleep, and I wake up the next morning um, before formation, and it was the first thing on my mind immediately. I was like, well, crap. And, <laughs> but I still wasn't giving it any credit at all. I, I pushed it out again. Um, so I go to formation go to breakfast, get back to my room, and I'm reading the daily readings. And I can't remember if it was in the first reading or if it was in the responsorial psalm. Um, one of the two uh, had a, one of the lines about uh, Melchizedek. Um, I don't think it was exactly the you are a priest forever, uh, according to the line of Melchizedek, but it was something to that effect. Um, I was like, oh, crap. You know, <laughs> Yeah, I've had all this go on. I open the readings and boom, there it is. And um, I was doing, uh, there's these daily reflections by Fulton Sheen that I was doing. Um, that I think y'all sent up with me um, right as soon as I got back. So I was just starting on it. And uh, I can't remember what the reflection said for that day, but it lined up perfectly too. And I was like, oh, well, crap. <laughs> um, and I think, I think that was, it was either a Wednesday or a Thursday morning that that happened. And it kind of quieted down throughout the day, you know, nothing really more from that. Now I'm still kind of pushing these thoughts away. Like, yeah, no, that can never be me. Um, and I get back to my room uh, Friday and uh, none of my roommates are back. None of my friends are back from classes I think had just started. So I'm like, okay, I'll just, you know, watch some YouTube, wait for him to get back. And, I remember I'd watched a couple, you know, Catholic videos here and there, like uh, Fulton Sheen. I love watching his old stuff. Um, a couple of things from Ascension Presents, things like that, but nothing too seriously and definitely not like, you know, didn't go searching for them necessarily. Like they're just, oh, it's there. You know, I got time out as well. But I get back to my room this time and I pull up YouTube and the very first thing in the top left recommended corner is a video titled, answering God's call to the priesthood. And I'm like, well, crap. <laughs> uh, and I was like, it was like a 
10 to 15 minute video. I was like, I'm here. Might as well watch it. So <laughs> I'm sitting here and I'm watching this video. And as it's playing, I'm like, I recognize a couple of these guys. I, I you know, I'm, I know, I know who that priest is. I know who that priest is. You know, I've heard of these guys before and the video finishes and it's from the diocese of Little Rock, which is my home diocese. I'm like, goodness, that could not be any more perfect. So at that point I was like, well, crap, there's, you know, something going on here. Um, and I think it was maybe the next day um, I told y'all, or I can't remember how the timeline works exactly. Um, I think it was the next day, uh, Saturday. It was either Saturday or Sunday that I called y'all. I was like, hey, I got good news and bad news. Uh, I said, bad news is I'm probably not going to be at West Point much longer. I got this medical thing going on. Um, you know, good news is I know what I want to do when I get back home. And um, we later found out, I think it was mom that pointed it out that um, I think one of the days was my patron saint, St. Maximilian Colby. It was his feast day. Um, and then I think the day that I called them, um, it was one of the Marian feasts. Which feast is that? Is it uh, August 15th? Assumption. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's what I'll say. I remember it was one of the big ones. Um, <laughs> And um, but I told y'all and y'all like, OK, we won't tell anybody. We'll let you tell them um, whenever you feel comfortable. Um, and I remember I got a letter from um, one of the ladies at St. Joe's um, who she's, you know, I don't know how she does it. She can tell when somebody's meant to be a priest. Um, <laughs> and she's been writing to me a whole lot um, every since I've been up at West Point. Usually it's just like a paragraph long, like. You know, hey, hope you're doing well. You know, here's some money. Go buy dinner for your friends, things like that. Um, she was really sweet. And I remember I got a letter the Friday that I watched that video, and I, I hadn't opened it. Um, I got back from Mass that Sunday, and I was like, oh, I, I forgot this letter. I had it in my desk drawer, so I opened it up, and it's three pages long. I'm like, well, crap. <laughs> and I'm reading through it, and... Um, that I can't remember what exactly she said, but somewhere in there, I think it was maybe the second page. It was like, you know, I know you really want to be a dad, and I think you'd make a great father, but I think you're called to the priesthood. I'm like, well, crap. <laughs> I've had all this stuff happen, and then that happens. Um, so I was like, well, you know, it's just a bunch of stuff lining up, you know, just perfectly. And I... You know, I couldn't explain it. So I think it was, um, is either, I think it was that following Wednesday, I had a CQ shift. Um, I had to go sit um, in company areas out at this desk in the middle of the hallway. And, you know, you got to announce when an officer comes in. And, you know, you got to, you know, patrol the hallways every now and again, things like that. And I'd finished all my homework. I still had like four hours left in my shift because it goes from uh, 4.30 to 11 at night um, so I'm like well you know I might as well reach out and see who the vocations director is see if I can talk with him hopefully he'll say I'm crazy and you know I'll never hear back from him or something like that sorry we don't and, have room <laughs> yeah something like that um, but so I look up I go to uh, Diocese of Little Rock's um, uh, website and I'm looking uh, find the vocations office and I looked down and uh, noticed the vocation director, um, the associate pastor at St. Joe's. Um, my, I think it was my junior and senior year. May it may have only been my senior year. Um, he, he wasn't there, there very long. He was there two years. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I knew that he was leaving from St. Joe's about the same time that I was going to West Point. Um, but I didn't know where he was going. Well, it turns out he just got appointed vocations director. Um, so I was like, oh, I, I know this guy, you know, they will make it easier to talk with him. So I reached out to him, emailed him, said, hey, you know, I got some stuff going on. You know, can you help me work through this, figure out what's, what in the world this is, what this means? It's like, yeah, sure. So we set up a, a, a meeting over Zoom one day and I remember talking with him about it all. Um, 
he was he's really good about like you know he's not trying to sell it to you if it's not for you like you know he's very good about you know trying to help you discern and not just he's not looking to recruit he's looking to find guys who are actually called um, which i think is really good um, and he was really helpful and he kept on giving me uh, little passages to read or you know things to reflect on and but uh i remember as one of the meetings that we had with each other um, and he was like uh, i think one of the exercises he told me to do while i was praying is like uh, kind of reflect on what you're feeling in your heart like you know what emotions are you associating with different things um so he told me to like you know reflect on like the military career ahead of me um or reflect on you know another job that I wanted whenever I got back home and then reflect on maybe going into the priesthood and like really pay attention to how you feel and uh, whenever I got back um, on the next meeting that we had it was um, I came back to him and I was like yeah I kind of feel like you know there's a little bit of excitement there's you know a little bit of joy there um, something that I didn't really feel with anything else and I remember talking with him about kind of the difference between telling uh, my friends um, that I was in Bible study with and, you know, the Knights of Columbus guys that, you know, I'm thinking this may be where my calling lies um, versus telling my, you know, company friends who are mostly not religious. Um, there's a couple of them in there, which, you know, all of them were super supportive, which I was, you know, very surprised to see because you know, it definitely hurt leaving. But, um, but telling the Catholic guys, you know, there's so much more joy in telling them than there was um, with telling my friends. And I, I couldn't really decide why. Um, but that was kind of another thing that kind of played into that, you know, you know, the, the joy and, you know, what situations are you finding that in? And so I made the decision. I think I made the decision as early as uh, October that I was, ready to leave and ready to be done with West Point. And I remember um, your little brother and I were, we were coming back from the cabin or we deer hunt mm -hmm. muzzleloader weekend. And uh, it, it got to be a kind of a, I don't want to call it a tradition, but more of a habit that Sunday afternoon, Elijah would call and we'd yep. have a, you know, two or three or four hour FaceTime session. Um, just yep. completely catching up with whatever was going on and it was just nice to even though physically you know you weren't here and and we weren't there but and and even a lot of times it was just silence we, it, you would be on the screen there mm -hmm. like you were, <laughs> like yep. you were home sitting on the yeah couch. but yep so on the way home we get you know i get i was expecting the call and uh i just remember you know answering the answering the call and and i don't remember if you called me and then I, you know, tied your mom in or vice versa, but I just remember. Yeah, I can't remember. Yeah. Your demeanor was completely different. It was okay. all demeanor. You were outside by yourself or mm -hmm. everywhere. You were oh, I remember. Yeah. You were sitting yeah. up against the monument or something. I don't remember where you were sitting exactly. Yep. But it may have been just up against the wall. I don't remember. But we, yeah. we could we could tell that something wasn't right. And yeah. So that Sunday, the, the, the next. So we were talking about that um, that Sunday on the on the FaceTime calls. We were you're on the other yep. side than you were last time. That's weird. <laughs> oh, other side of the <laughs> other side of yeah. my screen. So oh oh, I got you. <laughs> so and my my camera's like way up at the top. So I know it doesn't look like I'm looking at everybody. Oh, I'm looking yeah. at my screen. So sorry about that. Um, so we were talking about um, that Sunday when you did the when you called in and. And I was on, Patrick yeah. and I were on our way back from the cabin and mom was at home and I, we, we both just knew something wasn't right. Um, so that was on a Sunday and that next weekend was actually parents weekend at West Point. Yeah. It was the first time pretty much that parents were allowed back on. It, basically it was the first function. There might've been one earlier than that. I don't remember there being one, but it was our, it was, it was our first opportunity to possibly go up and be on campus with you. Yeah. And really, even to that Sunday, we had not really, we had pretty much decided, okay, you're going to finish this semester out. 
uh, mm-hmm. and you're going to be home and then it'll be all right. So we were really leaning towards not coming because we thought you're going to mm-hmm. be home soon. So it really doesn't matter too much. Well, when yeah. we got that call and, you know, it started out pretty normal and, and we could just tell something wasn't right. Um, so, and I don't remember at what point in the call, uh, <laughs> mom just blurted out, we'll be there Friday. And I was like, uh, I guess I'm taking a trip. <laughs> so, <Yep. laughs> so, um, so I, I remember, uh, Monday I went to work and I asked my boss, uh, I caught him. He happened to pull up the same time I did. And I caught him outside as we were walking in the building. And I said, Hey, how do you feel about me leaving? And he, his eyes got real big and he thought, he thought I was quitting. <laughs> I, said, no, no, no. I mean, like next week, not being here. He's like, Oh, what's going on? So anyway, I told him what was going on. Yeah. So, so we ended up leaving. I believe if I remember right, we left Thursday, we drove, uh, spent the night somewhere, drove the rest of the way, got there Friday. And uh, I remember we were, we got there at like three, three o'clock ish or somewhere like that. And, and uh, found a place to park and, and walked around and we knew mm-hmm. roughly where you were going to be, I guess, probably, obviously you kind of told us what time you were getting out. Yeah. yeah. So we were standing there waiting. So we, anyway, long story short, we got to go to the football game on Saturday, uh, hang out with your buddies, um, pretty mm-hmm. much spend all weekend, uh, went to mass Sunday morning on the oh, yeah. post. Um, where we got to experience a Father Matt Mass. Oh yeah, awesome, it's incredible. <laughs> uh, he was an awesome guy, awesome guy. He was one of the. I don't. You hate to say the word coolest in correlation to Mass. It was one of the coolest yeah. masses I've ever been to. It was. Fantastic. Oh yeah. Uh, and the amount of cadets that were there. Um, oh yeah, and uh, that Friday night, uh, Bishop Barron was there, so we went and got. Oh to, yeah. Got kind of yeah. forgotten about Once, that. Yeah, got, got to hear his talk, and that was cool. Got a picture taken with him. Um, oh yeah. And uh, so anyway, we, we did the weekend thing and, and hung out. Went to mass Sunday. Went to dinner. Got to drag you off post for a little while, and we didn't mm-hmm. do anything. We just kind of we just kind of relaxed, and that was nice. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Mom and I were staying across the river, and um, wow, how did I forget? I mean, Beacon, like, Beacon, Beacon, New York. Yep. Uh, ended mm-hmm. up staying a whole week up there. It was it was a great week. Uh, there was a little, a little church about three blocks from the Airbnb we were staying at, and uh, I'd walk over there every morning and go to seven o'clock mass. It was it was really cool. Um, uh, so we came home, and then fast forward through, and, and really the reason that we stayed up there was we thought you were coming home with us that week. Yeah, we thought it was yeah. going to turn around that quick because the decision had been made. You'd already talked to your tech officer, and then what did well, what, what happened there? <laughs> it was. Um... So I remember I went in and talked to my attack officer. Um, it was the first semester that she was a attack officer up there. She was a former West Point grad. Um, she was pretty cool. Um, but I I remember I went and talked with her, and I was like, hey, I've made up my mind. I'm, I'm ready to go. You know, I'm ready to get this process rolling. She goes, mm, give it another, I can't remember if it was two weeks or four weeks, um, and then come back to me and talk about it. Oh. Um, I was like, gosh, dang. No so I was, you know, uh, yeah, yeah. So I was like, ah, you know, and you know, by that point, it was, um, you know, I was very like, I was like, ready to be done. Um, you know, I'm excited for where I'm going. Um, you know, I'm ready to be um, done with classes. Um, it was actually funny. You could, if you looked at my, uh, at each of my grade ports for all my classes, you could see, um times where I thought I was going to be able to stay and make it through the whole semester and see yeah. the times where they told me you're going to be gone a couple yeah. days. I mean, it was just rising and falling so bad. So, um, which, you know, I was, I did okay academically. Uh, the first two semesters I was there, I, I did, you know, pretty good for, um, you know, definitely far better than they expected of me. Um, being a kid from Arkansas from private school. So, you know, I've got to prove a couple of people wrong. Um, but that second semester, um, it was, you know, I pretty much just because I was being told so many different things and my grades were so out of whack, I was ready to be done. Um, but yeah. Yeah. So we went and like I said, oh, we, we really thought we were going to carry you home with us. Kind of why we planned on staying a week because we thought, oh, about the end of that week. That didn't happen. That was at the end of nope. October. 
So we roll yep. into November uh, and we roll into, okay, you know, finally kind of the process of, um, of withdrawal kind of take, what do they call it? There's a word for it. Uh, out processing. Out processing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yep. So that kind of starts. And then what happens? We get close to Thanksgiving. Like, he'll be home for Thanksgiving. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And wouldn't you know it? I catch COVID. So yeah, you get COVID. <laughs> so. Yep. Quarantine for 10 days over Thanksgiving. So. Over Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Yeah. In, in, the, yeah. in the old, it was like in an old building. It was actually oh. really nice, wasn't it though? Where you, the room you were in, it, like halfway decent. It wasn't terrible. I mean, <laughs> it, it had a fridge in it, it had a microwave in it. Um, it was probably the coolest thing about it was the, um, the officer that would come and check on me, he was really cool. Um, a lot of the enlisted guys were really cool. Um, and also um, my uh, TAC NCO, he uh, brought some of his Thanksgiving dinner um, from right. his family over. And then um, I think it was my physics teacher. Um, he was a major and he brought some food over as well. And there was another family that brought me food on Thanksgiving. It's just you know, it, it was really, really cool to have that. You know, I was really thankful for that. Um, and then my friends kind of snuck around to the backside because I was, I was on the back part of the building. So I had a window. So I, you know, I'd open my window and they, they sat out. We talked for a little bit, but I mean, it was pretty lonely. It was, it was pretty rough. I was getting pretty stir crazy because it wasn't all that big of a room. It was Thanksgiving break, so I didn't have any anything to do at all, really. Um, so I was just kind of sitting there, and yeah, you know. But yeah, but I think it was. I can't remember if it was the week after. I guess it would have had to been that that next week. Um, I finally had everything cleared by, uh, I think Wednesday or Thursday, and my TAC NCO pulled me aside. He was like, "Hey, you know." No, he sent me a tech, uh, text. That's what it was. Um, he texted me and he's like, hey, you know, you got two options. Um, one, you can stay and finish out the semester, but you may not be leaving till, you know, maybe January and you'd have to stay Christmas break up here. Or two, you can just go ahead, start the out processing and be out as soon as you're ready. And I was like, OK, yeah, let's let's just go with it. Um, because, like I said, my, my grades were most of them were unredeemable. Um, I was still putting enough effort in, um, but not as much as I would have liked to. So my grades were just not where they should have been. Um, but I started the out processing paperwork and going everywhere, turning in gear and all that stuff um, Friday afternoon. Um, and I remember calling you and mom that weekend, or I think maybe it might've been just mom. Um, but I was like, Hey, you know, I wasn't really sure. I was talking with the guy over out processing. I was like, Hey, how, you know, how soon could I be out of here? He's like, I, I, it just depends on, you know, how quick you get paperwork done. And he told me to come back and see him Monday morning uh, to talk about specific days for leaving. And I was like, I don't know. It could be, you know, Tuesday afternoon, I could be ready to go, or it could be all the way through this weekend. Um, so I was like, you know, I got either a week or a day. <laughs> We're going to have to figure it out quick. Um, because mom was going to come up, um, drive up, um, so that I could, you know, get my stuff home without having to, I think they would have paid for shipping on a whole lot of this stuff, but it was just too much hassle. Mm -hmm. um, but I remember uh, Monday morning, uh, first thing I did, like their office opened at 7.30. Um, I remember it might have been 8. Um, but I went in there, I already had half my signatures that I needed. I said, hey, you know, could I leave as early as, you know, tomorrow afternoon? He's like, oh, yeah, if you got all your stuff, you're good to go. Um, so I called mom immediately after that. I was like, all right, <laughs> you know, I could be gone by tomorrow afternoon. And mom immediately said, yep, all right, I'm leaving. Yeah, she was yep. in the car before <laughs> so, the phone call got done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, Not quite, but almost. Yeah, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had everything packed and ready. Um, but, yeah, her and Adeline drove up. Um, Monday picked me up Tuesday afternoon. Um, I think it was right around 4 30. Um, all the guys helped carry the stuff out to my car, you know, said goodbye to them. You know, that, that was definitely tough. 
Um, was that tougher than was it tougher than you thought it would be? I, some of them that that ended up breaking down, I, I was surprised. You know. I oh surprised. yeah, like yeah, that like, should be, but it, yeah, yeah. Tough, yeah. I mean, I mean <laughs> it it made it easier that you know. Um, I told them back in I think it was September. Um, I think it was all the way back in September. It may have been early October, but it would have been like the first couple of days of October. Um, but I, I told them uh, sometime fairly early on. I kept it secret for about a month that you know I I probably wasn't going to be around much longer. Um, which you know I was really fortunate. The company that I was it and just great group, um, incredible people. So telling them, I remember I broke down crying that whenever I told them, um, and you know it, it was really cool having all the guys support me, and you know they're cracking joke jokes about you know who they need to off and things like this to get me to stay. <laughs> like, oh my gosh, please don't! But uh, yeah, yeah, they're, I, they're incredible people. Just yeah, I remember that when in October when your mom and I were up there. Um, I, I just, I remember thinking, because we stayed, of course, we had that whole weekend and we were, you know, mm. there were plenty of activities and things, you know, there on post. And then we ended up staying all week. And of course, we would come and, you know, on the nights that you could come get you for dinner and, and whatnot. Mm. And then, of course, yeah. that Friday night and Saturday before we left, just, I, I just, re I just remember that I kept thinking at some point, I'm going to look around at this and, and that campus is, is absolutely astounding. It's, oh yeah, it's beautiful. From the history to the to the scenery to the, it, it's incredible. And I remember thinking at some point I'm going to look around and go, I cannot believe that you are leaving this and you're going mm -hmm. to leave all this behind. Not because of what you want to do, but just the sheer yeah. enormity of of where it was, oh, yeah. what it was, the history behind it. Oh, and and that never happened. And I went, okay, mm. then I am hundred percent oh, confident. Yeah. That this is the right idea. This is the right thing. Oh yeah. Um, so, yeah. unless I'm forgetting any any stories in there, um, so mom comes picks you up. You come home. Yep. You're home. You're home for Christmas. What day was it that she picked you up? Uh, December eighth. And so, that is <laughs> yeah. piece of the immaculate conception. <laughs> so, so I'm like, okay, that kind of take yeah. note of that. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, oh yeah, yeah. That actually <laughs> comes a little bit important later. Um, yeah. So you come home and you decide that uh, you could have pushed it and and jumped a year ahead, but I think between you and Father Jeff, it's just a better to to yeah wait a little, just take some time off, you know, kind of yeah yeah <laughs> yeah. So yeah. You worked all spring. Obviously, you were building up to mm -hmm. with and and really doing and completing and finishing the application process for oh yeah uh, for coming in as a seminarian in the diocese. And uh, so I don't remember anything just, you know, absolutely astounding happening necessarily in the spring. It's typical. Yeah, not, it worked. not really. Uh, I just remember I didn't start working until um, after New Year's because I um, had to fix, you know, got insomnia while I was up there. I had to fix that. I had to yeah. I'll reset everything. And yeah. I remember waking up super stressed out every morning for about a week after. Yeah. Like, oh crap, I missed formation. Yeah. Realized right. where I was at. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that that semester, or uh, not really semester, but that spring, um, started going up to the house for meetings with Father Jeff. Um, and the house is what? I think uh, house formation. It's where um, all the guys that still need to get their undergraduate degree in philosophy go. Um, it's just in Little Rock. Um, it's it's a really nice area, um, really nice community. So I'd go up every Thursday night. Um, Thursday nights they have um, evening prayer, followed by adoration, um, followed by dinner, and then usually a talk afterwards. Um, so I'd go up every Thursday night, uh, or one Thursday night a month, roughly, um, while I was working on my application, um, kind of getting to know the guys, you know, still – not, I don't know. I, I, I recognize them, but I couldn't quite put a name to their face and things like that. Um, but just trying to, you know, get settled in, figured all the stuff out, which um, that was really incredible. There, I realized that they're a great uh, group of dudes too. So, but 
Yeah. So you got to hang out with them, you know, through the spring, get to know them. And then the summer you actually got assigned uh, parishes to stay. What did, what did you do? Like four weeks at? Uh, that- three weeks. Yeah. 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 So. yeah. I remember finding out about that. I, I went up one, uh, one Thursday. So it was towards the end of their semester. And Father Jeff, uh, the talk afterward was uh, about summer assignments. And so he's like, yeah, you can come over if you want. I was like, okay, yeah, I'll, you know, I'll sit in, you know, see where people got. And, uh, and I see that my name's already on the list and I'm already assigned it. Uh, uh, it had two different assignments, which um, those both ended up being incredible. Um, I had um, uh, Immaculate Heart of Mary in Marche and uh, St. Mary's in North Little Rock, um, which I thought were really cool because that's where – you went to church growing up. Um, yeah, yep. Michael Hart and then, oh yeah. And then after that, I had Tex Arcana um, with the priest down there who uh, went to high school where I graduated from, and Father Will Burmester. Um, and that was a really cool experience as well. And the people and the communities were just, you know, absolutely incredible. Um, I remember Tex Arcana specifically because uh, coming in, one of the things I was most scared about was in the Diocese of Little Rock, they want you to be able to speak fluently in Spanish as well, because I think the um, Catholic population in Arkansas is roughly 55 to 60 percent Hispanic or Spanish speaking, rather. Um, so I was super scared about that because Spanish or language in general is just something that I'm not good at. I, you know, I did Spanish in high school. I was forced into a semester of Arabic, which that was pretty rough. I enjoyed the class, but it was at West Point, not in high school. <laughs> yeah, 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 not in high school. Um, but, <laughs> um, but I remember going down to Texarkana, and uh, one of the guys that we were with, um, it was me and another new guy who just started uh, the same semester as me, and um, one guy who was about to go off to St. Monrad to start his first year of theology. And um, he was really, really fluent in Spanish. Um, and I remember going to uh, a whole lot of the different households. And I think I would say probably about, you know, 70% of the houses that we went to were Spanish speaking. And um, Just seeing him converse with these people and how much joy they had, you know, seeing their faith. Um, it's just awesome. And it got to the point where I was like, you know, yeah, I, I want to do this. I, I want to learn because it's just awesome. So, but yeah, I mean, yeah, summer assignments were incredible. So, so you just finished your first semester. Um, yep. I guess officially a, are you officially a seminarian yet? Or does that start when you actually get yeah. that in mind, right? Yeah. Cause you're, yeah. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm studying. Yeah. About to start actually this week, uh, starting the second yep. semester, spring semester. Um, yeah. Um, so, yeah, no, it's uh, that's a it's a long story, but it's a good story. Um, there okay. was another date that was significant, uh, wasn't there? Not wasn't this past December eighth? Didn't what? Didn't something happen again that made us think back? I can't remember what it was now. Oh, I have to ask your mom; she'll remember. <laughs> I can't remember. Um, the thing that I was talking about, um, uh, December 8th, um, so at the house of formation, um, Thursday nights, uh, doing evening prayer, um, one of the seminarians, one of the guys, whoever's left her for the week, um, gives a short, a short little, you know, one to two minute reflection, um, just on, um, on either the passage in evening prayer or, you know, if it's a feast, you know, they can reflect on that or, you know, things like that. Um, and I remember the first time that I did it was actually the uh, nativity of the Virgin Mary. And I, I thought that was kind of cool how, you know, the day I left was exactly, you know, nine months to the day that I gave my first reflection. So yeah, it was, yeah. that was pretty cool. Um, yeah. But yeah, I feel like there was something. But there's been, there's been, I guess the, the overarching point here is that there has been tons of confirmation 
It oh, not, it's it's ridiculous. It's not, yeah, not on a whim. Um, mm-hmm. So, well, uh, man, I told you I didn't know if this was going to be five minutes or an hour. And I really yep, I haze. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> probably about an hour. So yeah, we'll, uh, I can't think of anything else. And if there is, we'll we'll hold it for the next uh, the next one. Yep. So we'll. We'll, we'll touch base again. Obviously, I'll touch base with you because, well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one, last daily, so. <laughs> yeah. one last question. One last question. How did you get away? With, what did West Point think of the beard? How did that? Oh. Oh, wait. Yeah, that, that that could. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I have not been clean shaven since I left. I think so I might have shaved. <laughs> I, I can't remember when I, I think it was. <laughs> I shaved that night after we left and then never touch um, it's, it's funny at least to get clean shaved so we run into people that we maybe hadn't seen in i don't know six eight months or whatever and, you know oh yeah first thing they're, they're, going out. they're like ah didn't even yeah. recognize okay. yep. <laughs> oh, oh <my> yes <laughs> so well well that's that's awesome um everybody uh for all seminarians and for increases in vocations uh to the religious okay. life and priesthood uh and to you know contemplative life uh mm-hmm. we always need to you know keep these young young men and women in our prayers and in our existing priests as well they need prayers more than most of us probably oh yeah absolutely uh, so uh we we'll just ask uh, everybody out there to keep our seminarians wherever you are in your diocese and your prayers and your priests and your bishop uh and because uh, they like i said they they definitely need it um okay so until next time we'll wrap it up here and uh again as always guys thank you for watching hopefully this is uh something that you'll look forward to um uh we'll uh at this point i really want to try to do this this will be the podcast for january um and uh the intention right now is to do one a month um if you have any ideas of people you would like to hear from um i i think it's important to Everybody wants to see the, you know, and and I, I'm the same way. I watch podcasts all the time. The the people that you're used to seeing on these, and you're interested to hear what they say. But there are so many um, super saints in our own parishes and our own dioceses, and that's part of what I really want to strive to do is is introduce you to people that um, that uh, are just like me and you. Uh, they're, uh, you know, they do it day to day, and 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 they're doing doing the will of God and, and persevering every day. So, and I, and I think it's encouraging for us to hear those stories of, of <laughs> talking to myself, common folk. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we need to hear that and it's important. Uh, so as always, thanks for watching. Uh, we love you guys. We're praying for you. We ask that you pray for us as well. And, uh, until next time. Bye. <laughs>